on. Well, Joyce, I wanted to try and explain how there is a connection between the brutally cold weather we're going to be hearing a lot about in the midsection of the country and how unusually nice it's going to be here. And to do that, I want to show this to you in a unique way. We're looking at the northern hemisphere with temperatures plotted on it. Can you see North America here? The deeper the purple, the colder the air. You see that surge of cold Arctic air pouring down through Canada and into the Midwest? That is the polar vortex. I'm going to talk more about that in a second, but I want you to take a look out here to the west. Watch what happens when I switch from just looking at the temperatures to showing this to you in a slightly different way. Instead of just the temperatures, I'm going to show you how different these temperatures are from average for this time of year. And you can clearly see there's your big pile of blue, much colder than average for this time of year in the midsection of the country. But look out here to the west, particularly out here. I mean, Alaska is in red, but when you come down here to us, in western Washington and throughout Washington, we're clearly shaded warmer than average for this time of year. And there is a connection. When you get a surge of weather that is so far to one extreme over one half of the country, the atmosphere on the other half usually balances out. Remember from the story we just saw, the east coast is in the 60s, and they weren't experiencing this either. There they are, shaded in red. So because we've got such a dramatic surge of cold air pouring down into the midsection of the country, the atmosphere kind of balances itself out on either side. In other words, we are reaching the benefits of the polar vortex and all the cold air that's hitting the midsection of the country. And just a quick refresher on the polar vortex, the winds that encircle the North Pole, that's the polar vortex. It's always there. It's a normal thing. But every once in a while, if the winds weaken, all the cold air that's corralled in the middle of that thing are able to sink down towards the ground and then start spreading out. And you can see how some of this can get pulled down into the mid-latitudes where we live. It, it happens maybe two or three times throughout the course of a winter on average. Some of them make headlines. The one in 2014 did. The one this winter is making it as well. By the way, here's what it looks like down in the South Pole right now where the polar vortex hasn't broken and it's keeping everything contained. You can see all the cold air is right in the middle. That's what it should typically look like. But in the North Pole, it's a little, little different right now. Also, another example, not necessarily uh, the a simple story here. Those temperatures, even though they're cold in the South Pole, they're still warmer than average for this time of year. All right, Joyce, back over to you.